Ohio River is the third largest river in America and flows through the heart of the country. Its story and that of America's inland waterways are important chapters in our history. For centuries, the Ohio and its tributaries have provided an essential passageway for people and commerce. First, for the native peoples, and then for successive waves of Europeans. Indians and explorers, missionaries and fur traders, soldiers and settlers, politicians and entrepreneurs, heroes and scoundrels, all are star characters in this great saga. Are you ready for a great journey? Come and discover a place of adventure and courage, human resolve and ingenuity. legend of a great river traversing through the heart of America originated with the native peoples who lived on the American continent for centuries before European settlers arrived. The French explorers and fur traders who came to the New World in the 17th and 18th centuries heard the legend. A great and beautiful river rose to the south and flowed far to the west. How far, they wondered. And where did the great river lead? To the French and the Dutch and the English who had braved an ocean in pursuit of a new world, America's river of legend became a river of dreams. Could this be the shortcut to the Pacific Ocean and to the Orient that explorers had sought for centuries? And so, they loaded canoes and went in pursuit of answers. They found the great river, and it was just as the Iroquois Indians had named it, Oyo, the beautiful. explorers had dreamed of. It was something much greater, a river beyond anyone's wildest imagination. No route to the Orient would be found, but along its banks was located beautiful and fertile land. What the new world promised, the river would deliver. Rivers helped develop regions and served as pathways of exploration and new settlement. Rivers provide habitat for a great variety of fishes and provide feeding and nesting opportunities for wildlife and birds. Rivers form lakes and create many possibilities for recreation. Rivers like the Ohio, the Mississippi, the Missouri, the Cumberland, the Tennessee and their many tributaries help build America. James Harrod came by river to found some of the first settlements in Kentucky. General George Rogers Clark traversed the river to wrest the Western territory from Indian and British hands and lay claim to 37,000 acres of land at the mouth of the Tennessee River that his brother William Clark would later establish as Paducah. Settlers hungry for land and opportunity came by river to stake their claim and establish farms and businesses. Lawyers came in search of clients and preachers in search of lost souls. 
Companies of actors drifted downstream, along with authors, artists, merchants, and skilled craftsmen. The 19th century culture along the Ohio and Mississippi rivers inspired the writer Mark Twain, who gave us characters like Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Along the Ohio, cities would grow. Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Louisville, Owensboro, Evansville, Paducah. As America grew into a nation along and beyond the Ohio River, man's presence changed the river, and the river changed people's lives. To look at America's large rivers today, it's hard to imagine a time when most who traveled along these waters did so by canoe. But soon after the American Revolution, new kinds of boats appeared on the river. Flat boats and keel boats became the mainstays of the river fleet. The flat boat was a wooden flat bottom boat, relatively easy to build and steer. The cheapest of the many types of boats used, this was the standard conveyance west for many families and their possessions downstream. Keel boats sometimes had sails, but also were rowed or pulled, especially when moving against the current. By 1815, between two and three thousand men were employed on America's river barges and keel boats. But a new river power was on the horizon. The first steamboat on the Ohio left Pittsburgh in 1811 making it possible to move upstream against the current with ease. By the 1830s, hundreds of steamboats were plying America's inland waterway system, transporting people and goods to towns all along the Mississippi, Ohio, Cumberland, and Tennessee rivers. Steamboat races were popular throughout the 19th century, and the excitement had the edge of danger, for many races ended in tragedy. But the steamboat brought culture and refinement to the often isolated western towns of 19th century America. Floating theaters or showboats brought actors and other entertainment, as well as news from other cities and communities along the river. During the Civil War, steamboats carried food, guns, mules, and troops. Some were converted to gunboats or used to spy on the enemy. In the 19th century, the river would often be so low you could walk across it, and boats often ran aground, and varying river levels were only one of the many challenges for the river's early travelers. Fog, floods, and ice were also big problems. Ice was among the most formidable and dangerous enemies. Other hazards lurked beneath the surface in the form of limbs and tree stumps, or snags, as they were called. Nineteenth-century boat captains turned to published river guides, like the Navigator and Western Pilot, to help them travel safely. These river bibles mapped the river by sections, listed known obstacles and dangers, and warned of malaria in the summer, showed the channel and offered instructions for safe maneuvering. Removing trees and other obstacles became a service of the government under the direction of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The snags were thicker than bristles on a hog's back, wrote Mark Twain in Life on the Mississippi. But the government has snatched out the snags and they allow no new ones to collect. Later, the Corps built a system of wooden dams and locks all along the Ohio to control water levels and improve its navigation. Prior to these improvements, natural obstacles like the falls of the Ohio at Louisville made river passage at times virtually impossible. Eventually, the railroad, 
an even faster and cheaper way to move people and goods diminished the importance of steamboats as a means of moving people and cargo. But the river would continue to play a role in commerce, and river transport would revive in the early 20th century with the emergence of boats and barges powered by diesel engines. The Army Corps of Engineers continued to improve the river's navigability, replacing wooden locks and dams with more modern concrete and steel structures, and the river became the domain of towboats and barges. Today, river transport remains a mainstay of American commerce. One barge can hold the contents of 23 railroad cars. One tow of 40 barges is equal to 2,400 trucks. The movement never stops. Day or night, hot or cold, wet or dry, goods are delivered and picked up. Breakfast and dinner served at a steady pace of five to six miles an hour. For 20 or more days, the tow is workplace and home to the crew. The coal that's burned to light your house and streets, the petroleum that runs America's cars and planes, the rock that becomes roads and buildings comes to you via the river. In the age of the computer and satellite transmissions, the supersonic jet and modern interstates, the river is still what it has been for more than two centuries, America's greatest highway, one of its largest workplaces, and the place of opportunity. Today's river workers are true professionals, well-trained, and highly skilled with global positioning systems and computers, telephones, and fax machines at their fingertips. At the state-of-the-art simulator training facility at the Center for Maritime Education in Paducah, river pilots are exposed to realistic practice, managing the expected and the unexpected events that are part of any river transit. Safety is a great concern and each professional river pilot is Coast Guard licensed and tested in his knowledge of the rules of the road. From the presence of Civil War gunboats to the construction of steam and power plants, the river has always played a prominent role in shaping the local history in Paducah. Paducah, in fact, owed its early growth to its location at the confluence or meeting point of two rivers, the Ohio and the Tennessee. Though it was the last town to develop in Kentucky west of the Tennessee River, it quickly became the largest in the western part of the state. Paducah remains the urban center of western Kentucky, with the river industry one of its largest and most important employers. The Paducah flood wall completed in 1946 and adorned in recent years with scenes of local history is in itself illustrative of man's relationship with the river. The greatest flood on the Ohio River happened in 1937. It was one of the worst floods in American history. All along the river, cities were devastated. In Paducah, 95% of the city was flooded, requiring its virtual abandonment. Modern Americans rely on the river in many ways, for water to drink and to irrigate crops. We rely on the river as an efficient, cost-effective and safe way to move goods. The river helps produce electricity that powers homes and businesses. We enjoy the river for recreation, for hunting and fishing, boating and cruising, and we celebrate the river's important role in the heritage of our communities and our nation. The river has changed since America's early history, but its importance in our lives remains. Generations today and in the future will write new chapters about this beautiful river. 
history of the Ohio and its tributaries is an amazing story. The challenge of its future is likely to be just as fascinating.